Well, am I a lucky boy or what? Here I have a whole new tin of 72 Derwent Colour Soft crayons or colour pencils, you might call them. Look, completely wrapped up and I get a rip right into that and go <laughs> Don't they look great? And it's not just that layer, but look, there's a whole other layer down below. How fantastic is that? Now this Saturday, 31st of August, 2013, I'm gonna be with Derwent Pencils at the Great British Family Fair in Westrum in Kent in England. So if you're around, come along and meet us and uh, I'll show you uh, colour soft pencils and all their other fantastic things as well. And because it's all about British things, I'm gonna show you how to draw a British pillar box, which is where you post your letters. Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Now what I'm actually gonna sort of, sort of draw with this colour here, which is cranberry. So I'm gonna do the outline in this kind of dark red. And that's the top of the pillar box. And then it has a little kind of bit there. And, and then there's a kind of a pattern there as well, like that. And then we want another little bit there. And then it curls down. And then we want another little bit coming around like that. And then we can come all the way down to the base of the pillar box. Why is it called a pillar box? Because it's a box, but it's a pillar, I suppose. I don't know. And the whole country is covered in these, if you've not been to Britain. And this is where we post our letters. And they're run and owned by the post office, which used to belong to the Queen, I think. But kind of, sort of does in a way, I think, still. This is a little bit here which will tell you... No, I'm getting this wrong. No, I'm right. <laughs> There's a little bit which tells you which, um, how many times the, they've collected the mail. Uh, you know, wh when the next time they're going to collect it. So this is the bit that you post your letters into. And then this line is kind of a door which opens up. And down below here is a little kind of notice board thing, which tells you when the next letters are going to be collected. And then there's a little thing to put a key in a lock. And down here we'll have, oh, we'll have GR and a crown. Because the, the, it's the Queen's post and she, or the King's post, this would be George. Uh, so it'll be something like that. And then, uh, and then it's black on the bottom down there. Uh, and I'm not using a black crayon, I'm using petrol. It's called petrol grey. I'm always reluctant to use black because it's so dark. You can always use that at the very end. Now we refer to things as being pillar box red, which is just very, very red, really. And uh, very bright orangey red vermilion. So I'm going to do that and just leave a little bit of shade up there. And then shade in colour in there. I'll go over this in a minute in a different colour. And here, I'm not pressing too hard there on the edge. But then I, as I'm coming in, I'm pressing a bit harder to get it more sort of red. And that wants to be red in there as well. So I'm just, it's all very red. <laughs> And not quite so light on, not quite so pressing hard so head hard on the edges. So I'm trying to get this kind of feeling of it um, curling around and using the tonal value of the colour to um, make it feel like it's kind of curling around a bit. And the same we can do there like that. Um, but I think we're going to want to have it darker in places, particularly kind of underneath there like that and on the underneath parts um, so you can keep changing your colors that will certainly want to be a bit darker there and 
but um, and maybe kind of in the middle we can make this all a bit darker like that and then smooth our way out to the edges again and I think this is much too ready red at the moment so I'm going to add in a little bit of orange or a bit of yellowness just a hint on the edge and then kind of bring it into the middle and on the top again as well just to kind of warm it up a bit because it is a very bright red kind of thing now on the camera that's looking very orange but I hope it looks all right on the picture um, here we want to add these little kind of patterns on there and we can have a bit of shadow in underneath there I think and there as well I think this will probably be a little bit kind of grey and dusty and then we can fill in the times and then we want a bit of shadow coming down a bit of shadow underneath there and then it's going to be very dark where the letters go into the letterbox and now we can probably start adding some much darker kind of shading in on that. And I'm going to say that the sun is coming over from this side so I'm going to make these ones a little bit darker on that side and then the shadow will be coming down this way and in there maybe a bit of shading in there coming down there and we want the this kind of logo and then the crown be on top there and if you want to know how to draw the crown then I did a video of that recently and then the base of a letterbox is painted black and there's an interesting thing about <laughs> letterboxes because um, when I was younger I wouldn't do it now I used to every time I saw a letterbox I used to jump over it kind of leapfrog like a, like you would do in gym you know kind of right over the top and and I learned something about letterboxes. So when they're made, they they've got it probably comes down to about here or something like that, and they're just sunk into the ground. And as you approach a letterbox, you can tell how high it is by the amount of black that is showing. And sometimes there's only a little bit, in which case it's going to be very low and nice and easy to jump over. And sometimes they're really really high, in which case you're probably going to get stuck on the top, which happened to me once or twice and um so uh yeah that's how i know about letterboxes and the reason i started doing that was because i I was reading about baden powell who invented the boy scouts and that was his big thing he used to say to get a bit of exercise you should go frog hopping which is what he called it so this is oh, i don't know 100 years ago was so. and he used to tell boys when they saw a letterbox Leap over it. Keep fit. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I just started doing it. And after a while, I found that I just couldn't walk past the letterbox without kind of just jumping over it. And um, so that's kind of what I did. I remember once, once or twice leaping over it and kind of quite surprising people as I landed on the other side. <laughs> oh, where did you come from? Uh, I put a bit of shade on the pavement. Now this is British, so we don't have sidewalks, we have pavements. And the letterbox you will find usually on the pavement. And let me find something that's more brick red. There you go. And you will quite often kind of find there's a brick wall in the background, which will be the somebody's wall of somebody's garden front garden something like that which you might call a yard <laughs> we call it a garden front garden even even if it's just rocks we would call it a front garden even if it's only got a motorbike falling to bits in the middle of it we would call it a front garden <laughs> how to draw a pillar box with derwent color soft pencil nice
Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, why not go and have a look at my old channel, Draw Stuff Real Easy, where I show you how to draw a US mailbox, which is a little bit different. If you don't like that, try the mystery drawing instead. Either way, make sure you're subscribed to this channel on YouTube uh, for more drawings every Monday and Friday. And why not check out my website too? In the meantime, you keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.